All right. <laughs> I I had to consent to that. Yeah, man. Welcome back to your favorite podcast, Couple yes. Blind Spot. Hey. Today you'll notice we're in two different places. You know why? Because Colin's tummy hurts. I'm having multiple, multiple bowel movements. <laughs> I know, I love... They're all good, too. I love how I hit you up, and I'm like, so when are you coming to Brooklyn? And you're like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do that today. Yeah, I've taken uh, about, at that point, what I say was five? Six, I think. Oh, that's right. I sent you number six. Yeah, that was gross. That's hearty. Yeah. That's eating your spinach Popeye style. I had a kale smoothie today. It was pretty good. Good for you. I don't know. That Popeye reminded me of that. Well, I didn't. Olivia did. The The nice bodega man just gave me the leftovers. Hmm. What a good guy. Yeah. I needed it. I'm tired. Last night I went to a Grateful Dead show. And now I'm tired. I'm not going to say why, but if you know the Grateful Dead, you can probably guess why. <laughs> oh. But here we are. Got to get the podcast done. So. Got to do it. Yeah. Fucking episode 62. Uh, we're going to talk about something real. That has conspiracies behind it. No one really knows. Well, the everyone knows the origins are true because it's like documented. But no one really knows what's going on with the current day. So uh, episode 62, we're, we're dedicating this to the Theatrical Teamsters, or the Teamsters Union, which is Local 817. And uh, what they do is drive trucks. So Local 817, I told Colin to watch it. Uh, they're mentioned in a nice little documentary called uh, Fear City Mafia versus New York. Fantastic. And yeah, it's a great documentary. It's not like about the Teamsters, but it, they kind of tell like their introduction to crime within like the union's introduction to crime within like the timeline of the US and stuff. And uh, yeah, great documentary. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. But you should. The story behind the Teamsters is, and you watched it more recently than I did, so you can correct me if I say the wrong things here, but from what I gather is in what, like the 60s and 70s when the mafia like ran New York, like Goodfellas shit, uh, I believe John Gotti (laughs) took over the Teamsters union to smuggle drugs and money and shit and guns. Am I right? He yeah he was part of it. They the FBI and finally found out when they were looking at all the sheets. They were like, wait a minute, all these unions just happen to be mob. Yeah. And then when they finally bugged it, they realized, oh wow, they were having this whole money plan behind all of it. It was so it was it was so it was smart. Yeah, I mean, well, a lot of the shit the Mafia did was really fucking smart. And to think Um, that just a a few people were calling all those shots. Yeah, right. But I just think it's crazy once I learned that. Like today, since I literally work with Teamsters, it's funny. And me and Olivia talk about this all the time, how like every single teamster i know is like this big tatted up like rugged either italian or irish man irishman um and they're just like hard as fuck and don't take shit from anybody and it's just hysterical to me that like i don't think current day they're really at least the guys i know are like doing anything you know with the mob maybe they are but um you could tell that like their dads definitely like smuggled guns for john Gotti and probably killed people so that's fun and now they like their sons drive like celebrities around 
Well, yeah, that's some of the best security you can have. Yeah, dude. Also, the security guys are like, they all say they're ex-cops, but I feel like they're all ex-mob. But it could be the same thing. They're all really old back in those times. That I guess really what we're talking about today is the fucking mob at the end of it, which yeah. is insane. Wrap it all up into one. It's the mob. And in that documentary, they say that fucking like de Blasio or some not de Blasio, fucking the other guy who just Cuomo or I don't know. So whoever was the mayor or the governor at the time was like, like towards the end of the 70s going into the 80s when the crack epidemic took over New York and the mafia kind of like stepped down a little bit. He was like, we've rid we've rid the city of fucking the mob and this and that. And like, no, you didn't, dude. They're still around like Long Island's littered in mob. My dad's godfather, rest his soul, was a literal godfather. Like, <laughs> it's just like, dude, no, maybe you got it out of the maybe they got it out of the unions by like arresting like Gotti and then a couple of them got killed and shit. But like they're still fucking doing shit all of like the sanitation on long island is mob like you think they still have a hold yeah dude for sure i don't think the mafia is just like oh let's give up the richest city in america maybe i made that up but i'd assume so Hmm. everything happens in new york and it's where all the italian and irish people came and stayed well, yeah, a lot of here. a lot of Irish people went to Chicago for some reason, but um, transitioned. It's just like wild that they could just take over like full fucking subsets of like the union because that that shit is like those rules are so strict and shit, and like the fact that some union guy was just like. <laughs> Yeah, so John Gotti's going to pay us and uh, we're going to let him do what he wants. And it's just like, oh, my God. Like, in that documentary, weren't they talking about how, like, they would load up trucks with, like, like I said, like, guns and fucking drugs and money and, like, dead bodies and just, like, haul them out of the state and just, like, dump it. Like, it's fucking it crazy. It doesn't exist. That's, yeah. That's how they operate. I still, it still baffles me, and I also find it pretty freaking cool that there was, they had it set up, and he wouldn't be, he'd be, he, as they called it in the documentary, he'd be a soldier, but he was such a, a powerful soldier because of his position and his connections that people would come to him. I can't remember the guy's name. Uh, they'd come to him for to get their problems dealt with. Who Gotti? Oh, I can't. There was another guy. It wasn't. Uh, I think it was Fat Tony. Yeah, Fat Tony. What do you mean? Like he was just like the killer? Well, he was the guy who would set it up and make everything happen. Oh, he was the wheels behind it all. So if you had a problem or you needed something done, you'd go to him. Jesus Christ, dude! The mob is wild. Like, Goodfellas is my favorite movie of all time, and I can't believe that that's a real fucking story. Like, I met, dude, at fucking Mercy. I totally forget the girl's name, but she went to Mercy. Her grandpa, grandfather is the guy that Robert De Niro plays, fucking Jimmy or whatever his name is. And she's like, yeah, I visit him in prison sometimes. I'm just like, oh, my God. Oh, fun. Yeah, no, that's a fun fact. Like, holy shit. That movie's so fucking good, dude. But also goes to show how insane the mob is. When you, when you have that much power, you feel like you can do whatever you want. Like, I don't even know if this is a conspiracy. I think it's just something crazy that I wanted to talk about. The real conspiracy is that I made up is like are they still do they still have grips on like the unions and are they like taking money from because dude the amount of money these fucking guys make to drive big rigs is like absurd like i looked into it right before i called you and like the highest tier 
of like Teamster, which I guess is the longer you stay, the more money you make. I don't really know how it works, but the highest paid like tier of Teamster is $120,000 a year to drive a truck. So like, you're telling me that that's fucking union money. Like there's a lot of shit. If you really look into, especially the Teamsters union, which is verified was run by the mob at one point that like, all points back to they're like, yeah, we got rid of them. No, you fucking did. <laughs> no, you fucking did. No. No, 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 no. It's crazy. Like, if you look into it, it's just like, hey, on paper, no, you fucking didn't. Like, and like I said, every, with the exception of one guy I met last week, I think he was the first guy I met who wasn't Italian or Irish. And he was an ex-Marine. And then when he got back from Iraq, his buddy convinced him to join the Teamsters because the money's so fucking good. And he drives like techno cranes around like the big, you know, when you see a big sweeping shot that starts like really high in the air and like comes in like right on. Oh, that's him. Well, he drives that piece of equipment around and makes like insane amounts of money to do so. I feel like that's a pretty, pretty hard job, though. I mean, driving a big rig in New York is like, seems very stressful. I feel like they're, they may still have connections, but they also might be just getting paid for the difficulty. I don't know. I don't know. That's I, a lot of people you got to watch I out guess. for. That's a lot of turns. Yeah, but then you could argue like, do MTA bus drivers make $120,000 a year? I don't think so. What's the salary cap for an MTA bus driver? Because that's where you're responsible for more people. And I'd say, especially those big like accordion buses, those are bigger than a fucking semi truck. Oh, yeah, those are huge. How much does. Make in New York. Bro. 24k up to 80k so i mean 80k is still a lot of money the median is 63 almost sixty four thousand dollars a year to drive a bus and these dudes are making literally double that to drive film equipment around the city but i mean also like they drive dump trucks like the the teamsters are outside of film the Theatrical Teamsters are 817, which had Mafia connections, as well as like the shipping Teamsters. I, I didn't look it up. I don't know what local division they are. But that's what I'm saying. Like, if they were getting paid for the difficulty, MTA bus drivers would make a shitload of money. Yeah, that is that's a very good good arguing point right there how in or even like ups drivers like i know they're not as big as a semi but like those trucks are fucking huge see do you think i'm see my mind's just working on on, on how they can get that much do you think it's the the union within the company that they work for or is it all unions outside for what they're doing well like the the union exists to like argue for their benefit so that's why when the mafia took over the union everyone was like yo that is not chill like it's because they're the most powerful like crime organization ever so like you had these truck drivers who were just the mafia's bitch but they pay them really well because it was the fucking mafia and they'd like go into like governor's offices and be like, if you don't let us do this, we're going to fucking kill you. Which essentially is how a union works. But like a union rep can't like give a death threat to the government and be like, we need more money or we're going to fucking murder you and your family. Something's going to happen if I don't get it by next like, Tuesday. To break it down for you, that's why being a PA sucks because we're the only people on set without a union. So, like, they could keep us there as long as they want, pay us like shit, treat us like shit, make us do crazy fucking jobs because there's no rules on safety or, like, minimum wage. Like, we have no one batting for us. 
but with the unions, like the camera guys, they have a team of people behind them saying like, no, they need health insurance and they need paid days off and they need this amount of vacation a year and they can only work these many hours a day and you're going to pay them this much like base rate. So like, that's what the union does. Like the union, that's why like you see strikes and shit for like, like the electric union in the city and stuff. Cause if they're not making enough, the guy's are like, all right, well, technically we work for like the state. And according to union contracts, you can't hire outside people. So we're just not going to work till you give us what we want. So the, oh, when wow. the mob was running it, like the workers, even though they were being like extorted were happy because it was like they got whatever the fuck they wanted because john got he's like i'll murder you if you don't give me this you and your family say your prayers give us the money yeah dude it's fucking crazy that sometimes i would think that the movies that are based off the mob life, the mob mentality, and what actually went on, I'd be like, yeah, maybe that's exaggerated a little bit. Maybe it's not that real. Maybe well, it's a t- Depends on the movie for sure, because, like, Goodfellas was basically, like, the director and the writers, like, got the story from, I forget their names, but, like, from the guy Ray Loyota and Joe Pesci and De Niro play. Like, they got the story from the Goodfellas, and I was like, okay, we're going to make it a movie. And, like, same with The Irishman, kind of. The Irishman was different, though. I, I don't even know if I finished it. I fell asleep. Was it a little... Were you, oh, I thought it was a tad... But then, like, exaggerated? then, like, Black Mass, apparently Whitey Bulger somehow saw it in prison before he died and was like... Unless he died before it. I heard something about Black Mass where, like, someone close to, if not Whitey Bulger himself, was like, that's not how that shit went down. So it really depends on, like, the movie and the director. Because, like, the director of Goodfellas was like, this is a true story. I don't want to do anything to it. I just want to get it on film. So that people can, like, see how fucking insane the mob is. And that's why Goodfellas is such a good movie. Well, that's... That's exactly where my mind immediately jumps to, okay, now I want to talk about how many movies were actually based off something real that happened. You got my mind spinning again. Okay, let us spin. Uh, Let's pause for a second. I really have to blow my nose. This sucks. I was going to say, you sound congested. I am. I blow my nose so many times today. I'll be right back. All right, we'll be back, everybody. Did you hit the... Oh, you can't hear me anymore. Okay. We'll be back. Bye. So where is your mind going? What are you thinking about? Well, you know how all the old Western movies, how you watch them, you're like, wow, this seems... This seems pretty exaggerated a tiny bit, but it's also super cool. Yeah, it's, like it, Clint Eastwood movies and shit. Yeah. It's yeah. just hard for my mind to wrap around the accuracy of the movie to the events that happen for Goodfellas right now. Yeah, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, it depends on who made it. Because, like, I don't know if he directed it, but when Mark Wahlberg made Lone Survivor, he, like, they all, like, went to fucking boot camp, like, SEAL boot camp and, like, interviewed fucking Marcus Luttrell and, like, made it as accurate as it could possibly be. What? Yeah. Olivia's saying it's not that uncommon for it, but that's, like, Band yeah, Band of Brothers. Oh, yeah, as that well. too. S- Oh, that was Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that for Saving Private Ryan? You know, have you seen that movie? Yeah. So you know how Matt Damon's character is like the bitch of the group and like everyone resents him for some reason? Uh Uh-huh. It's because Spielberg, when he shot it, sent all the other guys to boot camp and kept Matt Damon back at home so that by the time they filmed it, all the guys were like, yo, Fuck this dude. (laughs) 
that's for oh my god yeah so like that's what i'm saying it depends on who makes the movie and a, a lot of movies are like like movies like that that are like based on a true story like they do do their research but then like you're saying there are movies like spaghetti westerns and shit or that just simply exist to just like be crazy you think the um the horror movies that are actually accurate are scarier than the ones that are you know just put out there to be like all right this is to send chills up your spine versus the, this is based on a true story like what i don't know i don't really watch the, horror some movies some of the conjurings oh some of the, uh, the conjurings how that how accurately they got it versus a quiet place yeah i don't know uh olivia needs oh she got one um i don't know i don't really watch horror movies like that but i guess like the haunting movie no there's no fucking way because like the all the haunting movies have to be scarier than what actually happened because also there's some people who don't believe in that shit like i know we both agreed on this podcast that like we do believe in like poltergeists and things like that like bad spirits but there are people who are like fuck this i just want jump scares you know what i mean yeah but also in terms of like son of sam and like amityville horror and shit like i don't think someone took over these men's minds and was like kill people like i think they were just fucking crazy and killed people but in terms of like war movies and crime movies and shit that really just depends on who makes it because like i said like black mass sick fucking movie but someone related to that story i forget who saw it and was like yo that's not how this shit went down like you just made like an, an action movie yeah so it was whitey bulger that's what i thought that's what i thought i thought it was him but i didn't know if because i know he died yeah so it was whitey bulger who was like yeah this movie's bullshit dude wow what what movie just popped into my head Fuck, where'd it go? I don't know. Oh. I lost it. Oh, well. Maybe it'll come back. Yeah, it all just breaks down to, like, who makes it. Because, like, if Michael Bay made Lone Survivor... Oh, I don't no. I don't think it would have been that accurate. It would have been a lot of explosions, which it already was, but it would have been more explosions. It would have, it would have been Transformers explosions. Yeah. Based but, on the true story. Dude, that's still the funniest shit. Did I tell that on the podcast? I think I did. Last time Olivia was with us. Yeah, I definitely did. That comedian who's like, yeah, if you showed Transformers in a movie theater in like the 1920s oh, yeah. and started it with based on a true story, people would literally kill themselves. Oh, yeah, that was the last time. Um, But yeah, dude, the unions are crazy. The mafia is crazy. I hope they make like more Fear City shit. They should. I mean, we're we're fans here of docu series because that's oh, what this pod that's what this fans. podcast is based off of. Easily, but yeah, that one was really good, and it made me like, because as New Yorkers, you know that like the mob was here, like doing fucked up shit when like our parents were kids, because Goodfellas was set in like the fifties or sixties. Maybe even the seven. I don't even know when Goodfellas was set in. But like New York used to be a fucking crazy place. And I feel like us, like kids our age, it still is a pretty fucking crazy place. But like you don't realize it till you see these fucking movies and you're like, oh my God, like that happened in Queens or like John Gotti took over a fucking union. Yeah, we think it's crazy now, but we're we're not. Imagine like seeing that no real time. Law. Yeah, dude, fucking no insane. No law, he, he, untouchable. And then also, you get 
Oh, go, go, go. Then you get rid of the mob and the fucking government starts a crack epidemic. Like, come on, New York. Get your shit together. I mean, starting a bigger, a bigger epidemic is a good way to get your current epidemic slowed down. Well, that's also a conspiracy about it is like whoever it was was like, yeah, we got rid of the mafia and everyone was like, no, you fucking didn't. And then next thing you know, everyone was like, fuck, crack is on the streets. It's like, oh, shit. Wait, we lost one problem, but now we have one that's even worse. But like there are theories that people think it was a cover up because like you can't just get rid of the mafia. Yeah. Like, think about the think about the Godfather movies. How like they jump from like New York to Italy to like fucking all over. And it's just like basically the whole point of those movies is like they're everywhere. Yeah, their reach is so far. And it all breaks down to, like, these ancient fucks in, like, the hills of Italy hiding who are like, yeah, let's fucking. This is how we do it. We started all of this. Yeah, dude. It's fucking crazy. We're still doing it. No one knows we're here. But we run it. Even the fact that, like, these dudes, most of them uneducated, can, like, run a small government based on crime is insane. Street smarts. Because you got to think about it. Like, the mafia is, like, a subset of government in a sense. Like, they have, like, presidents, which are godfathers. And then, like, the different families are, like, states. And, like, they're all trying to work together, but none of them really get along. Yeah, and they have a strict code they follow. Dude, it's wild. I, uh, I was wrapping up episode three. And before I came in here to set up, it was the part where the family set up a hit on one of the other families. Um, yeah. On, okay. I will I'll help you plan on when I'm done in like 10 minutes. Okay. But yeah, that and um, the FBI had to find out if they were having that big family meeting because obviously everyone has to agree on putting a hit on one of them. Yeah. <laughs> and that oh my god imagine how intense those meetings were I can't imagine but isn't that why Gotti I think that's why Gotti like got killed because he just went rogue and like started killing off like other heads of families and shit or some, some shit like that so there was someone who did that and that's why he got killed because he wasn't like He wasn't following the code. Yeah, they'd go to the meetings and be like, hey, don't do this. And then Gotti would be like, well, I want to. Hey, uh, don't do this. Kind of already did it, though. Yeah. So where does this leave us? Oh, fuck. It just popped back into my head. What? The movie Split. Oh, I still got to see that. Oh, my God. Such a good movie. How does Split relate to crime or war movies? Oh, it Is just... Because it, it's like an accurate representation of multiple that, personality disorder, that form yeah. of mental illness. Yeah. Because in the movie, I mean, some of the stuff the main character does when it's a split personality obviously is a little far-fetched. But they also put in there multiple occurrences where they tell truth, true stories about individuals that have been studied and documented where their other personality can do something that a normal human couldn't do. Fucking nuts. That's That's what it was. The weirdest disorder. Oh my God. Having multiple other people inside you. That just like do what they want. Uh, Yeah, no. no, 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 no. Maybe John Gotti had multiple personality disorder. He was a crazy motherfucker. Well, yeah. I think he might switch. He might have his own documentary on Netflix. Oh, he has to. I forget why I know so much about him, but it was definitely something that I watched. I I definitely did a school report on an American gangster, and it was 100% John Gotti. Yeah, because he's a fucking psychopath. Oh, 
You want to you wanna do a quick current event and then we'll wrap it up? Yeah, sure. Have you seen that Elon? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can we, before I know what you're going to say, before we get into that, can we just say, I meant to say this at the beginning of the episode, that Mike Richards already stepped down as the host of Jeopardy. Yes. I yep, love it. Yep, yep. I oh. fucking love it. So, yeah, anyway, say the new Elon Musk news. Yeah, how about the robots he's making? It's so dumb. What in the world is going on? Like, I'm with the internet on this one. Usually I'm like, no, here's like the pros and whatever. But like, yeah. we don't need that shit, dude. And here, There's a job shortage to begin with. No one wants to work. So you're going to make robots to take those jobs. Like, yeah, what? come on, Elon. Come on, man. To do the boring jobs. Like, we already did that. <laughs> They have those, like, robotic arms that put cars together and shit. We don't need fully autonomous fucking Tesla bots running around or whatever they're called. I was going to say, here's a prime example as to why we don't. Facebook shut down a pair of AI robots nicknamed Alice and Bob after they started talking to each other in a language they made up. It is believed the robots adapted the origin language to communicate faster and more efficiently. Yeah, I heard that. And then there was a conspiracy about that, too, which was like they started decoding the language and realized that these two AI AI bots were like plotting to like kill Mark Zuckerberg or some shit. Oh, yeah, they were after him. Like there was a conspiracy behind that. That was like, we don't need humans. Let's murder them. And it's like, okay, Elon, you're building robots with appendages like, nah, bro, that's some I that is some I robot ass shit. Oh, that is worst case scenario. You're fucking wild. I forgot about the Mike Richards shit too. That's so funny. That uh, hysterical. Well, I don't want to bring drama to Jeopardy. You already did, bro. Get the fuck out of here. We caught ya. We got ya. I was like, when I was watching the video I sent you, I was like, it'd be so funny if somehow it was like yeah according to his official statement he watched some podcast called couple pine spot and it made him resign i don't know why i was like hoping that would happen yeah mike came in the other day and he was in a pretty he was he was down we didn't know what was going on and finally we got to talk to him and we were like hey mike are are you okay what's the matter why are you so gloomy today and his response was I watched a podcast called Couple Pine Spot, and they really made fun of me and called out everything I was doing. Two two drunk kids made fun of me. It really hurt my feelings. What are you drinking today? What's in that cup? Water? Tito's and Sprite. Oh, shit. Couple fucking cocktails, Pod. What up? Chill. Chill. <laughs> what a strong sip. All right, I got to wrap it up. I'm going to a drag show. Oh, my God. Have fun, brother, man. I'll report back. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. Yes. All right. It's safe to say. We're out. All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. Hopefully, we're together next week. Bye, everybody. Hopefully. Bye, J-Mac. Later.